We have a top five matchup in week one of the college football season with Clemson and Georgia meeting on a neutral field in Charlotte. Two teams with title aspirations and Heisman contenders at quarterback. The Dogs have JT, the Tigers have DJ. And if the man they call Big Cinco looks anything like he did in his first two starts last season, Dabo Swinney could be on his way to yet another natty. I want to be great. So this is as simple as that. I want to make sure that when I step out on the field, I'm, I'm ready to go and that my teammates can be able to count on me. While Clemson and Georgia haven't faced off since 2014, DJ Uyunglele is very familiar with JT Daniels. Those two go all the way back to high school, facing off with Daniels leading modern day over St. John Bosco. Daniels then started his college career in state at USC, but adversity led him to test the open waters and head from the Pacific to the Atlantic. He took over midway through last season and won every start the rest of the way. Now he has Bulldogs fans dreaming of their first national title in over four decades. Having that unfinished business and so many guys buy into it, a big deal. It's the biggest non-conference game of the season, and it's right out of the gate in week one. Playoff ramifications in early September as Georgia meets Clemson on Saturday night. Here we go. Monster game in week one. Clemson clashing with Georgia at a neutral site in Charlotte, North Carolina. One of those games that it's the something's got to give games. Over the past four seasons, the Tigers and Dogs top two in scoring defense in FBS. Clemson, a short three-point favorite, totals 51 in a game with national title implications. Todd, uh, I'll start with you here. A lot at stake. Who do you like in this top five showdown? You know, honestly, it came earlier in the summer when I started to break this game down, knowing it was going to be the focal point of week one. My strong lean was towards Georgia, especially when there was four, four and a half available throughout the market. The more I dug into some of the numbers and the personnel, my tune switched completely. And with the number sitting at Clemson minus three, uh, I'm going to make a case for the Tigers in this spot. When I look at the quarterback positions, I think DJ Ungalele gets a step up over JT Daniels. But that's not the main reason why I like DJ Moore. I don't trust Kirby Smart to defer to Todd Munkin and let Georgia actually go out there and air it out. I get the feeling that when there are big games like we've heard all week coming out of Athens, that Kirby wants his fingerprints all over the game plan. What does that mean in 2021? It means Kirby wants to run the ball. Well, good luck into that Clemson defensive front, which is actually the more talented group of this particular unit. Meanwhile, you look at Georgia, and while their front seven is extremely deep, their defensive line arguably one of the best in the country, their secondary leaves a lot to be desired. It's tough to replace guys like Eric Stokes and Tiger Campbell on the back end, especially against the vertical passing attack that'll be headlined by Justin Ross, who will be back at full speed when we were a little bit concerned about his availability. I also love the reports I've read coming out of Clemson that Will Shipley has shown game-breaking potential in the backfield. I just get the feeling when you look at these two head coaches and their pedigree, one coach has consistently got his team to perform on big stages. The other one has come up short. Uh, I'm going to lay the points here with Clemson. I actually believe Clemson, too, will have a slight home field advantage playing in Charlotte. Yeah, it's going to be fun to watch uh, Justin Ross back on the field again, uh, one of the most dynamic wide receivers in college football. And it shows you. You know, I got a chance to watch Ohio State last night. Hakeem, boy, I was wrong. That team is so talented. It is amazing how good they are. I'm expecting that same type of performance tonight from Clemson because it has been Clemson, Alabama, and Ohio State over the last 10 years that have dominated the recruiting wars. Then you have Georgia, LSU, uh, some other schools that fit in there, you know, after that pecking order. But those three scores are another stratosphere when they get players. And Clemson has so many returning uh, experienced players coming back. 13 on defense from a defense was just amazing last year. Number two defensive line in the country, number one linebackers, number two secondary against a Georgia team who I think their weakness could be the offensive line. They will start two redshirt freshmen and they have five and they're too deep. I know they're very talented, but they are inexperienced. I don't know if they're ready for this stage yet, but I know DJU is ready for this stage. And I don't trust JT Daniels. Did not like him at USC. He did play very well for Georgia last year, so I had to upgrade his power rating begrudgingly. But I don't think it's enough. I think Clemson is the far better program right now between these two schools. Seems like it's going to come down to both teams have great defensive lines, great front sevens. What about the offensive line? Seems like Clemson's might be a little bit less than Georgia, so I'll be watching that. Uh, on Saturday night. Guys, another SEC ACC battle happens in Atlanta. Number one, Alabama, 14th ranked Miami in that Chick fil A kickoff game. 
Bama getting this early test from the Canes. The defending champs have a new QB in Bryce Young. The U has their QB returning too with the uh, Derek King who was experienced. He's 24 and his sixth year of eligibility too as well. Todd favor though total 61. Kenny, uh, how do you see this one playing out down there in the ATL? Yeah, I, when I first looked at this game and I started to look it over, I said, man, this is going to be a very good under game with, with Alabama's defense and Manny Diaz on the other side of defensive coach. But then I started to add up the points, and my, my number came out to this game. I had Alabama scoring 42 points, 42 to 26. That adds up to 68. So I've got to trust my numbers. I've got to trust the process. We saw C.J. Stroud last night. I think Bryce Young is a better quarterback. I think you're going to see a great quarterback tonight uh, with Young. I think he has a monster game. And, and Derek King, another one of my favorites. This guy, you got to be rooting for him. Uh, with the knee injury, the surgery January 4th, vowed to be back by Alabama. Here he is. He's been at full strength and 100% for over 45 days now. He will put points up against Alabama's defense in this game. But Alabama's offense will be clicking on all cylinders. They are going to look very good in this game. So over the total for me. Well, it was too good to be true, guys. It's only the first Friday of college football, and there's slight disagreement between Kenny and myself on a game. But it comes with the caveat that I can still win my bet while Kenny wins his. I'm going to go under the total in the first half at 31 and a hook. When you look at Miami last season, one of the big things that they struggled with was slow starts. And their three losses, they were outscored 49 to 3 in the first stanza. And when you look at Manny Diaz taking over for the defense, you know it's going to be a source of pride. Now, I don't love Manny Diaz as a defensive play coordinator by any stretch of the imagination. But at the same time, Bryce Young, I think, will pick up right where Mac Jones left off. But I have some reservations about Alabama's skill position talent. Yes, John Meshi is outstanding on the outside. And Brian Robinson will be yet another outstanding running back in a long lineage there. But I think Alabama doesn't need to go out there and make the big plays. I know it's a fast track in Atlanta, but they can lean on their defense, which will be a strength of this team early on, in my opinion. And I can see Miami being a little bit skittish, letting Derrick King take off from the pocket on that surgically repaired knee. All reports out of Coral Gables, the one unit that Miami has concerns with is their wide receiving core. And if that's the case, look for Alabama to play eight men in the box, match their defensive backs out on an island, and try and force Miami to win those one-on-one -on -one battles on the outside. You look at Alabama over the last couple of seasons, they've done nothing but absolutely blitz their opponents. But the last time they played a team inside the top 15 was back in 2017. And while it's not apples to apples, it was their defense that rose to the occasion in a dominant 24-7 performance. For the sake of Kenny's over, let's get to the half with 31 points on the board. I can win by the hook, and then we can get 70 to 100 scored in the final 30 minutes. You know, they mentioned Manny Diaz. He cut his chops at Mama Mater, Middle Tennessee, uh, defense coordinator 2006 through 09. So I saw great things in Manny down in Murfreesboro with the Mafia, Middle Tennessee. I have to give him a shout out. Ranked on ranked in the Big Ten, number 19, Penn State visiting number 12, Wisconsin. Penn State won and covered the past four meetings against Wisconsin, while Wisconsin went 0-3 straight up and against the spread versus ranked opponents last season. Upset as a favorite in all three games. Badgers are a five and a half point home favorite on Saturday. Todd, does Bucky Badger buck the recent trend and earn redemption against the Nittany Lions? I'm going to lay the points here with the Badgers. When I dig into this game, I like the level of continuity that Wisconsin brings back on both sides of the ball. I think when people dig into the Badgers' numbers last year, they're going to be turned off by how poor Wisconsin was, not only running the football, which is ingrained in Badger DNA, but their inability to create big plays. They only had 19 plays last season that went for more than 20 yards, but a lot of that can be attributed to a receiving core that was completely depleted. When you lose Danny Davis, you lose Kendrick Pryor. The running back room was extremely thin. Both of those guys are back. They'll join Jake Ferguson, their talented tight end, along with a backfield that has a surprise number one running back listed on their depth chart. Clemson transfer Ches Malusi ahead of Jalen Berger. I think that can put a chip on Berger's shoulder and help this Badger team create a little bit of balance. When you look at Graham Mertz, he started last season outstanding in prime time against Illinois, then dealt with a shoulder injury, missed extended time because of COVID, and it cratered this entire offensive grouping. Meanwhile, on the defensive side, there are very few defensive coordinators I respect nearly as much as Jim Leonard when they have an entire offseason to devise a game plan. And meanwhile, for Penn State, yes, they finished the season a heck of a lot better than they started last year, winners of four straight after they lost their first five. But the problem I see in Happy Valley is James Franklin can't settle on an offensive coordinator. In comes Mike Urich, their third new OC in four seasons. Sean Clifford has to learn a new scheme yet again. 
And while they do have talented receivers in Parker Washington and Jalen Dotson, along with a healthy return of Noah Kane, I have some major reservations about what this offensive line is going to look like for Penn State. And the more I dug into this game, I think the Badgers are better on the offensive and defensive line. I actually think the Badgers have an edge at quarterback and skill position players I'll call a wash. I think Camp Randall is going to be foaming at the mouth for an early kickoff in this spot. I like the Badgers to win by more than a touchdown. Yeah, going to be going to be a great crowd. Um, Tanya kind of made made my bet is uh, under the total in this football game. Uh, Wisconsin is a run first team, 60% of the time. I think they're going to get back to that. Last year, just 58% of the time. Previous years, around 63, 64%. So I think you'll see that. They do play very slow and methodical, too. Uh, the Badgers average just 128 plays a game, 12 under the NCAA average. The defense was tremendous last year in the first five games, allowing 17 points or less. And Penn State, James Franklin's got up definitely – uh, put a lot into that defense this year. They returned 14 players. The defense gave up 30 points per game on median last year. But if you look back to 2019, they allowed 12 points a game and just 20 in 2018. I think that's more of the defense you're going to see out of the Nittany Lions in 2021. I think this is a real tight battle. I think it comes down to the wire in a low-scoring low scoring football game. I'll be rooting for Todd to win, though. I have no side in the game, just the under. <laughs> Basically, what you guys are saying, going to hear a lot of jump around at Cap Randall uh, Stadium. Nittany's yep. uh, started 0-5 last year as a program worse. What you got? No, I got, I got nothing. I'm ready for the next pick. <laughs> All right, I'm good ready stuff. To go. <laughs> guys, there's like close to 60 games on Saturday, so the board is yours. What's your best against the spread wager this weekend in college football? We'll start with you, uh, Todd. Well, this game was a bet that I thought I was going to have in the win column already last night, but Mother Nature had different plans as Rutgers – and Temple had their game rescheduled for an early kickoff in Pascataway tomorrow morning. When I look at this Rutgers side, this is a team I think that has gradually upgraded its talent level with Greg Schiano. Are they ready to compete in the Big Ten East? Absolutely not. But can they take advantage of their non-conference portion of the schedule that'll see them play Syracuse, Delaware after they take on Temple? I think absolutely. They bring back a bevy of starters. And when you look at the recruiting battle between these two programs, this is going to go a long way between that Philadelphia Jersey corridor if Rutgers is going to be at all relevant. I think Greg Schiano was a massive upgrade at head coach. It's going to take him a little while to get players in place. But the other thing here, the more I dug into Temple, I mean, this was a team that had a revolving door at quarterback. I think, Hakeem, you were the only one that actually didn't take snaps uh, for the Owls at any point last <laughs> season not. when they went about seven or eight deep on their depth <laughs> chart. Rod Carey uh, wasn't shy about sharing his disdain, saying there's no way our team is ready to play a football game. And you know what? A lot of times that can be motivation, but I think there's always some truth in jest. Uh, I think Rutgers goes out there and gets a dominant performance. It's scary laying this kind of number with a bad football team, but I'm going to do it here with the Scarlet Knights in their season opener. I'm going to take Utah State plus 17, uh, playing Washington State on the road in this game. New head coach Blake Anderson comes in from Arkansas State where he went to six bowl games in seven years. I really think this guy's a very good football coach. Gary Anderson was a guy that I thought was a good football coach, but it looks like kind of went downhill a little bit in his two years at Utah State. He really did poorly, especially in, in year two. He was let go. Blake Anderson's been brought in. But the cupboard wasn't bare. The talent is there. This team has a lot of uh, transfers that came in. They have a lot of 60-year seniors that came in. They're very experienced. They do have talent. Logan Bonner comes in from Arkansas State. Uh, Blake Anderson brought three starters in from Arkansas State. They also brought some other uh, recruits in from other other uh, teams. So maybe getting to learn each other a little bit. But if they were playing against a team that was really that good, I may be worried about that. But I don't like Washington State's team. I don't think their talent level is that high. I think their offensive line is weak. I think their defense is weak across the board. Jarrett Garitano comes in from Tennessee at quarterback, mm -hmm. uh, completed 60% last year. Six touchdowns, four INT, INTs for, for the Vols. The Vols couldn't wait to get rid of him. That's all I heard from Vols fans, that, that he was not a very good quarterback. So I think this game comes down to coaching. I think it's Blake Anderson. I'll take him over Nick Rolovich anytime. Uh, go, go Aggies in this one. <laughs> also, remember to get yourself this, the 2021 College Football Power Ratings presented by Kenny White Sports. All right? It started the season 4-0. Mm. So, like, we're not just blowing smoke up you, you, you know what here. Okay, we're giving picks that, this, and like I say, knowledge in your mind, money in your pocket. Like, you got to pay a couple bucks for this magazine. You can go to powerratings.com, but, like, you're, 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 it's going to pay for itself. Like, you know how there's all this information? This pays for itself. No, 
This literally will pay for itself. All right, I don't know about literally because that's probably taken out of context, but whatever. <laughs> get, get the magazine. There it is. See? Yes. And he's got it right there. It's, cabbage in your pocket. There, Love it. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Hakeem. That, that might, if you had cabbage in your pocket, that might get a little wrinkly and might be a little sour. So just go with the cash or the, 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 the cash. Again, 58 games on the schedule on Saturday. Let's get your best over-under wager for Saturday's slate. Kenny, where are you taking us? I'm going to go Mississippi State, Louisiana Tech, over 52. I was really surprised to see how low this total was because we know Mike Leach and his offense, and they love to pass the ball. Yeah, he's going to little, make a little bit more concerned effort to run a little bit more. I think he ran it last year. What was it? Uh, very low percentage. 24% I have. But I, I've seen that people said uh, less than that. But I do a median. So maybe his average is lower. My median number is 24%. But he likes to play fast. Uh, did not play as fast last year as he wanted to, but now I think he has the team in place he needs. Jack Abraham, I think, fits uh, his quarterback situation. Uh, the defense is good, but not great. Uh, in Louisiana Tech on the other side, I did worry about this game when I first handicapped and started to look at uh, Skip Holtz, and he's a very conservative coach. But he has come out of his shell a little bit, and his offense, Offenses have actually played much better the last couple of years. And last year, he opened up the season with 31 against UAB and 31 against Southern Miss. Uh, offensively, they were far better two years ago, 35 points a game. And I like what he has coming back. In this game, it's not going to be Luke Anthony, who I thought would be their quarterback. It's going to be Austin Kendall, who quarterbacked at Oklahoma and West Virginia. So he's got a guy that can lead the offense, the defense. They brought in three transfers. They're bragging about the three transfers they brought in. One from Vandy, one from Arkansas, and one from Tennessee. But I really don't have them rated that highly. So I don't think it's that huge of an upgrade of those transfers that came into this program. So give me the over tonight or tomorrow night, Mississippi State and Louisiana Tech. Kenny, I'm also going to find myself on the over train as well. I'm going to go to a border battle between Maryland and West Virginia and go over the total at 57. When I look at this Maryland offense a season ago, they checked every box for skill position talent. They have, in my opinion, an underrated quarterback in Talia Tagovailoa. You look at their receiving core that returns largely intact with all three starters expected to contribute at a high level. And the other thing about Maryland, they put up crooked numbers despite finishing 99th in explosiveness last season and from an efficiency standpoint, 76th in the country. The defense, in my opinion, was slightly overrated. I expect that unit to regress. And against the West Virginia team, I'm a little bit concerned about what's going on in Morgantown. I love Neil Brown as a head coach, but you have as many players transfer out of the program as he did. You can call it a changing of the guard. You can call it an underlying element. But I think this defense takes a massive step back, and Maryland's going to put them on their heels early and often. I also think West Virginia will be able to do their fair share of scoring. Uh, this is a total I thought that should have opened in that 61 and a half, 62 range. It opened at 55. I still think there's ample wiggle room to go over 57. Points of plenty between the Terrapins and the Mountaineers. Over, over. There we go. All right, let's get your best parlay for the day. You know, I mean, I like to put together like a seven-teamer sometimes. Um, usually it doesn't, it doesn't pay out. Usually <laughs> I got like – That's tough. Because usually, usually I'll take like the heavy favorites and I'll throw in a dog, and then one of the favorites will get upset. And then I'm like, what are we doing here? Why did I do that? All right, Todd, give, give me something here that, that we have a, a high probability of hitting. What do you have for us? Well, I came. I don't know if you ever really have a true high probability of hitting a four-teamer, but the reality of it is that's never kept you or our bosses away from the window. So we're going to go three totals and a side here to try and get things jump-started in style on Saturday. And the first total will take us to West Lafayette, where I think you're going to see fireworks between Jonathan Smith's offense for Oregon State that'll travel to take on a Purdue team that I really believe needs to rebound to try and help secure some of the job status for Coach Brom. They've really fallen on hard times, but this should be a defense that they're able to exploit. Oregon State extremely light in the trenches, and this has firefight written all over it. If you're looking for a rock fight, though, that'll take us to San Marcos, Texas, where I think Dave Aranda is building something special on the defensive side of the ball with Baylor. The problem for the Bears is I don't think they bring much offensively. And while it is awfully scary to bet a Texas State game under, it wouldn't shock me at all if we're talking about Baylor pitching a shutout here against an in-state program. Uh, we'll go out to the Rose Bowl, a nightcap in Pasadena. Let's just hope there are more fans in attendance than the 19 we saw out there for UCLA's opener against Hawaii. This is a Bruins team who's not going to be able to run the ball against as little resistance as we saw against Hawaii. Uh, I think you're going to see UCLA's defense actually be drastically improved. And, and I have a drop-off between Miles Brennan, their projected starter, and Max Johnson. I think LSU is going to be more effective running the ball, and 65 felt a shade too rich. And an in-state game here, one team has a contest under their belt in San Jose State. 
USC is a team that lets inferior opponents hang around, and it's rare you can take a Power 5 team, uh, at, or excuse me, a group of five team against a Power 5 team and say you have a legitimate coaching edge. But I think that's what you have here with Coach Brennan up against Clay Helton. Nick Starkle, no, he's not Keaton Slovis, but he should do enough to keep them in this game from start to finish. I'm going to take the Spartans plus 14 as the fourth leg of our 14. Wow, I just woke up from a nap. Whoa, thanks, <laughs> 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 Woo, gave me 10 minutes to take a nap there on a four-teamer. I don't know. I'm glad you didn't have an eight-teamer. We'd have been running until tomorrow morning. We're saving that for next week, there. Kenny. We're saving that for a little college football NFL eight-teamer next weekend. So be ready. Same time, Whoa. same place. <laughs> I'm going to go with a two-teamer, but you may get a four-teamer very easily. I'm going to go Louisiana Tech plus the 23 and the over, and I saved this for four. As I mentioned, Skip Holtz used to be a very conservative coach. Over the last three years, his teams have thrown the football more than they've run it, and with a quarterback like Austin Kendall, I think he's going to light it up tonight. Mississippi State will play fast, but Louisiana Tech, they are a very talented team. They will stay within that number. Hey, throw in Clemson and throw in uh, Utah State plus the points. Then you got a four-teamer, Hakeem. I love it. I love it. I, I love you get entertainment. You get value in many ways, a bevy of ways here. Entertainment between Todd and Kenny as they go back and forth. But really, at the end of the day, you get what matters, knowledge in your mind, so you can put money in your pocket. That's what we're doing here. We're having fun. This is what you want when you're looking at college football and you're looking to wager on some games. All right, here's a look back at their picks. We hit you with a lot of stuff here, so maybe take a screenshot or just uh, remember your favorite pick uh, that either Todd or Kenny had. Go back and take a look at the parlay. Think about maybe a little sprinkle on that as well. Uh, they both love Clemson to cover the three. Uh, they're split on the under and the over here between Miami and Alabama. So Todd likes under 61. Kenny likes the over there. So split on the total there. Wisconsin and the under. Maybe think about a possible correlated parlay there. Uh, their best against the spread wager for Saturday. Rutgers minus 15. Kenny White, Utah State plus 17. Their best total. They're both going over in a pair of games there. Moneyline Sprinkle Central Michigan plus 450. Utah State plus 600. Again, 58 games on the slate on Saturday. And we just gave you a bunch of picks right here on CBS Sports HQ. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.